Hey guys, just want to give you an update on KSP display so far. So a big shout out to Osh Park, getting the PCBs all printed. Um, and this is what the main board actually looks like. This is the controller board. And these are the display boards. Along with the analog displays, and I'll show you them in a minute. So currently, this is a fully wired up soldered down built control board Let's see if I can f focus this a little bit better there we go have it upside down okay and there's the headers for the controls for all the displays and then these are each of the display modules so as you can see eight seven segment LEDs I back mounted some of the, well the headers for one thing, I back mounted them because I figure whoever can finally build me an enclosure for this it would be quite, kind of easy just to fit it right inside of an enclosure where only the numbers show as long as I had everything else back mounted. So as you can see I built a number of these displays um, it's four, digit, four digit displays, basically it's just a eight digit board and I use less of the seven segment LEDs. Another four digit display. This is a four digit display with. This guy is a four digit display with a decimal jumper. And as you can see, what I did here is I made sure that each of these have the ability to use decimal jumpers, basically just to create a decimal point if we want to have a more accurate type of a reading. I'm going to use this for orbital inclination. This guy right here is going to be used for radar altimeter. And then we have the rest of the full eight digits. We'll use one for uh, apoapsis, periapsis, the current altitude. Um, over here I have some more that I've actually, I want to show you how it's actually wired up inside. This is one of these I have actually set up for speed, for your velocity, and then um, I haven't really decided what I wanted to find the other ones at. Right now I have the control board, like I said, it handles up to eight of these display modules, seven segment display modules. So I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is going to be full eight. I have six defined so far of what I want. I have another two that I, I have no idea what I want to put on there yet. And it also handles up to six analog displays, which I'll show you what it all looks. So um, basically it's a simple kind of bus system, in and out. So this is the first guy, in, out to the next guy, out to the next guy. And I tried to make this as modular as possible because I figured we'll keep the cost down. If somebody wants to buy it with only you know three or six of these displays it doesn't have to come all packaged as one you can just basically detach it and you don't need to use all the displays same with the analog displays so let's actually go ahead and um, wire it up fire up KSP and we'll show you what it looks like in the raining hey guys state. it's all wired up now just starting up KSP as you can see right here, I'll just take you through each of these. Here's the main control board, just chilling in the back. Um, I went with green LEDs because I felt that they were more Apollo-like. I don't know, just felt more natural, looks better, they're brighter. Um, here we have uh, the radar altimeter, your current velocity, the periapsis, the, uh, the altitude, and your apoapsis. Let me just lower this real quick so you can hear me. And then over here we have your uh, orbital inclination. Now, like I said, I have up to eight allowed, but I couldn't really even think of another two definitions for number readouts. So I'm sure that you guys will leave comments and tell me what to make them. But like I said, this is how great the system is. It's very modular. I can just unplug one of these, plug these in, and within the plugin that I've created, it just kind of automatically, you can set what display you want to bind to what reading. 
Over here we have our six analog displays. I went with plugging in all six just to kind of show you how this works. This is what I'm thinking of doing, customizing the actual inlay. For this, we see that the inlay is the oxidizer inlay. I haven't done the rest of them yet. I will get around to it, but just to sh run you through what we got here, we got the oxidizer, we got the liquid fuel, we got monopropellant. Um, up here we've got intake air if we're doing a plane mission. Um, we have your G-force right here. This is uh, going to go between uh, 0 and 15 G's. And then your energy, how much electrical charge you have in your current aircraft or in your spacecraft for that matter. So let's fire up a spacecraft and we'll see how it looks. Displays are real bright, they look nice. So do the analog displays. Oh, and over here, you know, I got a couple of complaints last time about the annoying pitch of that uh, master alarm. So what I did is I just went with a standard LED for right now. I don't know. I'll figure something out, maybe make more of a siren type alarm for it. But for right now, you'll see when the master alarm, which is programmed uh, basically by the player um, within the plugin, you can program any type of condition to set off the master alarm. But... Um, That'll just turn red. Right now I have it for low fuel as your master alarm. You can set it to G's, have it reset itself. It's, it's all up to you. So I just created a simple um, a simple rocket just to kind of show you how this works. You'll see there's really nothing to it. I just put a, pretty much some monopropellant on it, two stages. Nothing crazy, just to give you an example. And uh, we'll launch this up, and you'll see once uh, once the plug-in kicks in, once it detects the rocket, the energy, the monopropellant, everything will just click right in. Still loading. There it goes. Here you go. So you have full electrical charge, full oxidizer, full liquid fuel. We have full monopropellant. Um, right now, no intake air. Our G's. Got a little sunlight there. Sorry about that. Our G's look about normal. Just pulling, you know, pretty much one G right there. That's about one G. You got to think. I got to put different inlays in here. This is between zero and five. It's really between zero and fifteen G's. So right now it's showing about one. And uh, over here we see this is a full electric charge. Um, this is the speed, as you can see, I'm using for the velocity. It's very accurate. It's uh, two, uh, two place and goes to the hundredth. And then we also have right here our radar altimeter. We're about 15, 14 meters off the floor. And then we see also uh, we have our apoapsis, the current altitude, the periapsis, and then an orbital inclination, which is actually at point one right now. So we're going to... Set SAS on this and launch. You'll see, here goes everything. So here we go, we're climbing. The apoapsis is rising, our current altitude is rising. As you can see, our radar altimeter is rising. This is our speed. Um, we're having a little bit of a wobble, probably because I totally did not check the weight on this rocket. I just kind of put it together. And, of course, I overheated because I'm using the giant engine and then throttle down. So let's relaunch this real quick and I will be much nicer this time. Throttle up! Not all the way this time, there we go. And over here as you can see, so we've got the G-Force so you watch the oxidizer as I'm starting to continue to go up. This is for the first main tank. Starting to deplete. We also have our energy there, which looks good. This is our liquid fuel. And monopropellant, which we're not using any of right now. So our radar altimeter is continuing to go up. There's our velocity. Our uh, apoapsis and our 
current altitude, and inclination. So we're going to try to get this guy into orbit, and um, I'll cut there, just so you don't have to watch this whole thing. Get to a more interesting thing while I was climbing into orbit. How useful some of this information is actually as you're climbing. Here you see with the orbital inclination, um, we can see it's a little bit off, and if I uh, start to push myself a little bit more towards uh, 180 degrees, you'll see that I'll remedy some of this uh, even during the flight. So I'll always have a constant readout as to what I'm doing, which helps out. Right now I'm way above where I need to be to get into a proper orbit, so I'm just going to cut my fuel right there. I mean, cut my, uh, my throttle right there. Let us climb for a bit. Um, as you can see the speed. Over here, we're not looking good. We do not have a lot of fuel left. Uh, this will eventually throw on a master alarm, but as you can see, we are finally in microgravity, so uh, we are starting to get more towards that zero g-force. So what we'll do real quick is we'll try to get into some sort of an orbit, even if it's extremely elliptical, just so you can see the periapsis. So let me just go a little bit ahead, see if we can get our current altitude a little closer to what the apoapsis is going to be. And that should be good for right now. Probably won't get too far with this, but if anything, it'll at least show you a little bit of how the displays work. So I'm just going to try to get into some, some type of an orbit for right now. Just so you can start to see the periapsis take effect. And there it goes, right there. So we're one su some type of an orbit here. Very elliptical. You can see where the apoapsis is versus the periapsis. Very elliptical orbit. And um, I'll just show you real quick the master alarm as well. So here we are just kind of floating out in space. We're very low on fuel, so I'm just going to kind of kill out the rest of that fuel by doing a retrograde burn to bring us back to Kerbin as well so you can see what that's like as you see as I'm moving about here um, burning my RCS so the monopropellant uh, that analog gauge is actually going down as I use the monopropellant all these gauges are working accurately so I'm gonna just burn and you'll see that there it is, the master alarm went off because we are now below 10% fuel. We're about to go to no fuel. So now we'll just kind of glide right back into Kerbin. And uh, you'll see what that looks like in a second when the radar altimeter kicks in. Let me just cut ahead to that. As you can see, the electric charge now, how it dwindles as I move around, just due to the fact that I have no type of um, energy creation on board. There's nothing generating energy of any type. And you'll also get to see as we re-enter, the uh, G-force kind of pick up a bit. So I'll Starting skip Starting to come to back that. into Kirpin's atmosphere, as you can see. We are dropping pretty quick, and our G's are really starting to pick up right now. We are starting to get a nice giant red flame around our capsule, and our, our G's are really kind of going through the roof right now. We should kind of max out right there, as we're starting to slow down right now. Things are looking pretty good. Master alarm is still on, obviously, because all of our gauges are pretty much reading zero. Except for what little energy I have left in the batteries. And as you can see, now that I just opened the parachute, it's trying to stabilize itself by moving around with SAS on. We're burning some more of that electric up. And the radar altimeter is starting to work. This thing is so great when you're landing on the moon or another planet can do the whole landing with an EVA with just these um, gauges set up. Don't need anything else.
all these gauges can just kind of tell me exactly what's going on. I could do a whole moon landing with nothing else. So you can see the G-Force just whipped up real quick because the parachute sprung open. But it's starting to settle now. Probably cracked all my Kerbin's necks, but all my Kerbal's necks, but whatever. And uh, that's about it. So currently, the next step for this is just kind of creating a little bit nicer looking GUI for the plugin, so you can map all your own. Uh, you can map all your own meters and gauges to the resources that you want. And um, then just trying to find if anybody in the community can help me with creating an enclosure. I've asked a couple of times. I know some people have reached out to me, but now that I actually have all of the um, pieces of really Kerbal Space Program's uh, display module that I'm creating here, the KSP display, um, I can really kind of give out better dimensions to anybody that would like to attempt it. And uh, that would be a real step forward in getting this into more of a production state and then uh, I guess uh, just opening up a Kickstarter for funding to really kind of get this out to you guys uh, I'll just try to figure out what the cost is going to be and if we sell it more of modular like I was talking about uh, probably keep it down if you wanted to just get the control unit and a couple of displays or buy displays piece by piece you can kind of make your own price for it but um, as you can see here, we're about to we're about to uh, land. We're about to touch down. I'll fast forward just a little bit, speed things up, just so we can see that happen. And we're about to touch down. And there we go. We're at zero. Everything zeroed out. And that's it. So guys, please. Leave me comments, like it. I know that the forums are down right now. Once the forums come back up, I'm going to be putting this post up there um, with all the updated video. And if you guys can just give me a couple of suggestions, maybe if you'd like to help out with the enclosure, that'd be huge. And, uh, you know, just the more positive feedback I get from this, the more it keeps me forward, moving forward and developing it and getting it into production. So uh, let me know what you think and um, what other things uh, you think that uh, you might want added or changed and um, for the most part if you think that it's good to go we can kinda just kickstart this and get it into some type of production to get it out to you guys. Great the All right, ease of um, hooking this up to your own computer. Obviously I said this in the past but all it is is it's all through USB communication. We have a custom USB driver that is custom made for the KSP display when you plug it in it installs drivers uh, standard USB input drivers and uh, it comes up as the KSP display device and as you can see this just plugs right into the control board and uh, that's it so I just wanted to reiterate how easy it would be um, for you guys to use this it's pretty much install uh, the plugin plug it into your computer. The computer, if you're using Windows 7, will install the right USB input drivers. It'll come up. That KSP display has been installed, and then you can just start using it right away. All right. Thanks, guys.